Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. You got me last week, you know. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom, bro. Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom. Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. This week we are in Torah portion, a Kev. And we're reading from Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 12. And we're going to Deuteronomy 11, verse 25. And as most of you may know, the Torah portion is just a section of the first five books mm-hmm. of Moses. And we read this on an annual cycle. And the title for a Kev, as you can see on the screen, can mean as a result of, consequence, because, if. I'm sure Tommy will touch on this a little bit more later. Um, but I just want to share something I've been meditating on this week, really. I just want to, and I, th- I think it's quite related to the Parsha. And I just want to share an experience I had to, uh, with, with a family member when I, was, when I was younger. And I was about eight years old. And I used to always watch nature programs with my dad. He was, he was he's big on nature and e- um, evolution, unfortunately. Um, but he would, we would sit there for hours and we would watch them. And, and that was probably the one thing that we did really bond on, that and football. Um, everything else, we were complete polar opposites, really. And my dad was actually a stark atheist. And, uh, you know, when, you, when you're young, obviously, he's, 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 he's someone who you look up to. He's your, he's your father. And I remember um, one time on the weekends, I used to go to my nan's. I used to go to my, to my grandmother's on the weekends, and she used to have me over on the weekends. And my nan, you know, if, if she heard me saying call my grandmother, she would, she would probably slap me across the ears. She's like, no, I'm your nan. I'm not your grandmother, I'm your nan. <laughs> grandmother adds a, adds a few ages to me, a couple of years to me. And yes, I used to stay at my nan's on the weekends. And I remember one time we was... We was walking to the corner shop and in the morning she used to go and get the papers and she used to buy me a little chocolate freddo if you know what one of them are maybe a little twisty um carton of juice and i was walking i was walking to, to the shop and i was with my nan and i was i remember like i was i was like about eight years old and i was quite proud and i, I just learned all this information from watching like the nature programs and like speaking to my dad and i was like yeah so like um, you know, 225 million years ago, you know, we was apes and, mm-hmm. and like, yeah, I, I remember like, just go, just feeling so proud and I'm just reeling off all this different information of like, yeah, and, and then the meteor hit and, and, you know, and, 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 and this happens and then, and then <laughs> evolution happens. And I remember feeling really clever at the time, really clever. Like I just, I was basically just copying my dad. I was copying my dad and I was copying uh, what I'd learned on the, on the nature program. And you know, my nan, just to, to sort of set the scene, my nan was a very, uh, you know, she was a very, very stoic lady. And um, that's the only way I can really describe her. You know, she endured a lot of hardship, but she never complained. You know, she was a single mother of four boys. So she had to have the, 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 the rod and the staff, so to speak. So, you know, even, even when my dad was at my nan's, he didn't mess around. He was, he was always on point. I mean, nan, she was, she was a trooper. She really was a trooper from a different age who, who really had to endure a lot of hardship. And I looked up to me nan quite a lot. And, and as I was, I was just walking to the shop, I was reeling, reeling all this information out of laying off. And, and from what I understood, you know, she never had a faith. She never had a, a, a faith. And, and as, I was, as I was quoting the nature programs, National Geographic, all the other things, she stopped me and she just asked me this simple question. She said, okay, Jack, you're going on here, but why is the sky blue? Okay, and little clever Jack was muted. <laughs> and if someone was being a bit of a smart arse, you know, they could say, well, it's the sun rays, it's how it hits the atmosphere. You have the, you know, it's, 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 it's the, the air particles and the water particles in the air and like the blue light, the blue light is easily more seen, it's easily more visible, that's why the sky is blue. But no, my nan was like, no, Jack, but why is the sky blue? And I was muted. And I remember trying to, like, give an answer at the time, little eight-year-old me. And she, and, and she kept asking me. She kept asking me until I realised what she was actually, actually asking me. <clears throat> and what my nan was saying, she was saying, why, why is it blue? Why is it not purple? Why is it not green? And she was implying, just like a painter would choose the colours off his can- canvas, to create a scene she was implying that the sky was blue f- for a reason 
for a purpose. It was it was it's been chosen that way. Forget all the science aside. It's been it's been chosen by a creator. <clears throat> it was really for a reason. And my nan never ever hinted again about any anything related to her faith, but she stopped me in the tracks that day and really questioned me and it always stuck with me. Why is the sky blue? Okay, and I believe it's really for a reason. And I was meditating on these thoughts this week and I came across a reggae tune released in 1976. It's by an artist called Junior um, Hibbert and it's called Really For The Reason. And anyone who knows me in this room, you know, they know that I love me biblical reggae. There's something about it, it's authentic. It, you know, there's, it's, it has integrity. And we always see art, great art, being produced in times of trial and trauma. You know, for instance, we have the blues music that came about through the slavery in America. And then we also have the reggae music that came about through the oppression and the slums that the Jamaican people was living in. So there's something in, integral and pure about the music. Not all, you know, you, you have got a filter. And you could say the same as well about the Psalms. You know, when David, he was being pursued and, and persecuted by Saul and, and his son, he wrote beautiful Psalms, didn't he, in his time of trial and in, in his time of need. So art does really come from that time of oppression. And I was listening to this, this tune, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share with you the lyrics, I'm gonna read, read to them like a poem because I think it fits in well with the Parsha and what we're about to read, okay? And yeah, speaking of reggae, you know, it's, 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 a, beautiful, it's a beautiful form of music and um, Peter Tosh once said, who's a famous reggae artist, he said, I've never heard, um, he said, I don't think anyone has wrote lyrics like Bob Marley since King David has wrote the Psalms, mm -hmm. you know? And it, it is that way you listen to it. And a lot of the tunes are so biblical. They're so biblical. And, and it just resonated with me. So the song has simple but effective lyrics. I'm gonna read, read you to them now, okay? Like a poem. Okay, beloved, so. Really for a reason. Why does the butterfly fly? It is for a reason. It's really for a reason. Why does the cool breeze blow? It is for a reason. It's really for a reason. Why does the green grass grow? It is for a reason. It's really for a reason. Why do I sometimes cry? It is because I'm from the Father. It is because I'm from the Father. And that's why the sky is blue. It's because the Father has chosen it to be so. That's why the cool breeze that's why we can feel it outside it's because the father has cho chosen to do so okay and once we grasp that simple simple concept the gospel message and everything falls into line this is a simple message which our father teaches in the word of god okay the song is implying like my nan that everything has a reason it has an architect a father from what i remember my nan never spoke or leaned in conversation towards God again. But this was enough to question all the information that I'd learned from the TV, all the information that I've learned from the magic mirror on the wall, okay? It made me question. So how does this relate to our Parsha? Well, our Parsha starts in Deuteronomy chapter seven, verse 12, but we're gonna read just the verse before now, just to get a little bit more context, okay? So Deuteronomy chapter seven, verse 11. Therefore, you shall keep the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which I command you today to observe them. Okay? And I just want to say now, as we're going through these blessings which we're about to read, and as we're learning about the commandments every year, we may not understand all the blessings we're going to read today. Okay? We may not understand the reason of why they're there, or the reason they're there for ourselves or for others, but I'll guarantee you 100% it's God's best interest. Okay, and our Jewish brothers and sisters have a really simple way of defining all of the laws found in the Torah. They categorize them into two different um, sections. We have the Hukim and the Mishpatim. Okay, the Hukim 
are those laws in the Torah. We seemingly do not know the reason why we keep them. Okay, for example, the mixture of wool and linen. It says in the Torah, when you're wearing clothing, don't mix your wool and linen. I don't know why, that seems odd to me, okay? Is it wearing zitzits, wearing tassels? That seems a bit odd to me, you know? Why, why does he want us to wear bits of strings at the end of our garments? Well, we've just got to trust that there really is a reason, okay? And then it makes more sense when we read the Mishpah team, okay? It makes a lot more sense because we get examples like um, the, the prohibition of um, stealing, um, taking bribes. These are laws that any normal and decent society would enact, right? You know, not killing your fellow man, okay? Looking after, we can, we can grasp that. We, we, we can grasp that. But the Hukim, it can take a level of, of, of a spiritual understanding. And I'm not saying we will all get it in this lifetime, but I know one day he will have the answers to our questions. For instance, this is a this is a hukim that I believe has been revealed to us. We know that we aren't to eat pork, okay? It's only 2,000, well, more than that, 4,000, 5,000 years later, we learn that pork is actually bad for you and it can actually create cancer in your body, okay? Without that scientific technology that we've had to look and study and to do all these different, we would never have realized, okay? It, it, it fell in that category of a, of a hukim. We didn't know quite know why we didn't eat pork, okay? <clears throat> so it's the Hukim and the Mishpatim. For the Hukim, laws we don't understand, whether that's, laws them, whether that's the laws themselves, or the result of the consequence of carrying or not carrying them out. We must, like a child, say to our Abba, our Father, and say, okay, Father, I trust you. You know better, who are we to say otherwise? If we truly put our faith if we truly put our faith in the author of creation, a God so infinite and magnificent, who made the butterfly fly and the green grass grow, who are we to question his judgments? Mm -hmm. Who are we really? And biblically, we see this revealed to us in its grandeur in the book of Job, okay? When we see Job questioning God, God mutes him just like I was muted by me nan, okay? <laughs> I, was, I was muted and we're gonna go now just to the book of Job. And I'm just going to I'm just going to read this off the screen. It's on the screen if you don't have your scriptures with you. And this to me just it just I, I, I could, I'd be speechless if I was Job, and I, I could imagine he was. Job chapter thirty-eight. <clears throat> then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, "Who is this who darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Now prepare yourself like a man. I will question you, and you will answer me." Mm -hmm. Oof. I mean, I don't know about you, but if the living, the living God said that to me, it's, you know, you're on your toes. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding, who determined its measurements? Surely you know, come on. Or who stretched the line upon it? To what were its foundations or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy, or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst forth and issued, it issued from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and the thick darkness its swaddling band, when I fixed my limit for and set bars and doors, when I said, this far you may come, but no further, and here your proud waves must stop. Have you commanded the morning since your days began? and cause the dawn to know its place. I mean, this is huge. <laughs> that it might take hold of the ends of the earth and the wicked may be shaken out of it. It takes on form like clay under a seal and stands out like a garment. From the wicked their light is withheld and the upraised arm is broken. Have you entered the springs of the sea or have you walked in search of the depths? Have the gates of death been revealed to you? Or have you seen the doors of the shadow of death? Have you comprehended the breadth of the earth? Tell me if you know this. I mean, <laughs> Job must have been muted. I know I certainly was just off that little question from me, Nan. I mean, who are we to question the Almighty? Who are we? <clears throat> who are we to question the author of life? My, my brother Joe always gives a great analogy on this. He says, if my three pound brain can understand the complexity of our God, he wouldn't be much of a God worth serving. Mm. And I like to sum that up as like, it's like trying to fit like 100 gigabytes of storage in a one gigabyte memory card. I mean, 
it's impossible. You can't do it. And if you are going to do it, it's going to break. And I mean, if you could do it, he wouldn't be really much of a God worth serving, would he? Let's be honest, he just wouldn't. I mean, if we could comprehend his vastness, he'll be, he'll, he'll be mortal, wouldn't he? He'll be mortal. So it's okay if you don't understand it all. I don't either, okay? I trust my Abba and keep a simple faith. I obey his commandments. Two scriptures I want to show you on the screen. Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Amen. Amen. First John chapter 5, verse 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. Amen. Amen. Praise Yah. So with that, we'll start looking at the Torah portion, Ekev. Um, and I'll hand it over to you, Brother Tommy, if you'd like to, uh, just before we get into the reading, if you've got anything you'd like to, to share this week at all. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, Jacko. Yeah. A nice opening, that as well. Just, um, just short and sweet, really. A keb, um, in its simplest form, a keb, it means, um, well, you've got it there, as a result of or a consequence of, it can mean because or if. Another interpretation would be on the heels of, yeah. in other words, um, if you do this, this happens, this is the result of or the consequence of that action, etc. And it's usually, um, in this context, it's usually a, um, a conjunction. You know, it links to two ideas in the sentence. So if this happens, that will happen. If you do this, that will that's the consequence, etc. Um, in other words, if we if we do his commands, he will bless us. For example, you yeah. just uh, mentioned the commandments there. Um, another um, interpretation of this word is heal, um, and there are a few. These same three letters um, that you have here for a kev, which is iron, kuf, bait. Different pronunciations, but the same three letters will give you slightly different meanings. And one of them is a heel. And if you remember uh, back in Genesis, the, it was, I think it was the first prophecy of Yeshua, wasn't it? Mm. Um, he will shake your heel, but you will crush his head, mm. you know? And then we also remember Jacob, Whose name means heel grasp it or heel grab it. Mm. Yeah, a cob. Yeah, a cob. You know, the same, a keb. Mm. Um, and Jacob is Israel. Yeah. You know, and it points to, for me, it points to us. We see the link to Yeshua, he's the heel that will crush the, the head of mm. Hasatan. So Yeshua is the heel. Jacob comes out clinging to the heel, and he's the house of Israel. It makes it points to me that like we are to cling to Yeshua, mm. you know He is the heel, and our brothers, uh, brothers and sisters, Jewish brothers and sisters, believe that um, the on the heel this this ekeb literally refers to the Messiah who is to come, and that the uh, this they believe that we are in a generation that will follow on the heels of Yeshua. Mm. You know, it's, uh, it can go quite further than that, but I'll keep it short and sweet, bro, because I know you're going to go into it yourself a little bit more. But yeah, that's a Kev, anyway. Oh, praise you. I'm so happy you mentioned Jacob there and uh, um, the serpent um, being crushed um, with the heel, because I'm going to look at part two as the Abrahamic side of it, um, where you covered either side there. So, so praise you. Um, praise you. So this week we've got five chapters, as you can see on the screen. Um, it starts in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 12, and we have the blessings of obedience. And then chapter 8, we have remembering the Lord your God. Number 9, we see Israel's rebellion um, reviewed. And in number 10, we see this, actually see the second uh, pair of stone tablets and the essence of the law. And lastly, in chapter 11, we see love and obedience re rewarded. So you could say it's, um, in, in a lot of ways, it's a follow-on to what? Uh, Joe's teaching was last week, which which was just in, in, incredible. Speaking about the mitzvahs and the wedding vows, um, this is a running theme now. We've got to remember this is Moses um, in his in his final hours, and he's he's given the speech of his life. Okay, he's not he's not holding any punches. He knows he's going to cross over um, spiritually, 
um, to 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 um, the other life. And um, <clears throat> he's just he's just he's going all out with this speech. That's what the book of Devarim is. It's a speech. It's a prophetic speech. And um, so all this, what we're going to read about, it can apply to us. And I hope to show that today in the book. Um, and just for time wise, as always, we're just going to touch on um, chapter seven and eight, and then ten and eleven. So we get the two bookmarks of either end. Okay. Um, so with that being said, if you could turn to your Bibles if you haven't already, and um, we'll we'll make a start on the reading, please, brother. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so we'll go from Deuteronomy um, 7.11 all the way to the end, please. Therefore you should keep the commandments, the statutes and the judgments which I command you today to observe them. Then it shall come to pass, because, Akeb, you listen to these judgments and keep and do them, that the Lord your God will keep with you the covenant and the mercy which he swore to your fathers, and he will love you and bless you and multiply you. He will also bless the fruit of your womb and the fruits of your land, your grain and your new wine and your oil, the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flock, in the land of which he swore to your fathers to give you. You shall be blessed above all peoples. There shall not be a male or female barren among you or among your livestock. And the Lord will take away from you all sickness and will afflict you with none of the terrible diseases of Egypt, which you have known, but will lay, lay them on all those who hate you. Also you shall destroy all the peoples whom the Lord your God delivers over to you. Your eyes shall have no pity on them, nor shall you save their gods, for that will be a snare to you. If you should say in your heart, These nations are greater than I, how can I possess them? You shall not be afraid of them, but you shall remember well what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and to all Egypt. The great trials which your eyes saw, the signs and the wonders, the mighty hand and the outstretched arm by which the Lord your God brought you out. So shall the Lord your God do to all the peoples of whom you are afraid. Moreover, the Lord your God will send the hornets among them until those who are left who hide themselves from you are destroyed. You shall not be terrified of them. For the Lord your God, the great and awesome God, is among you. And the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you little by little. You will be unable to destroy them at once, lest the beasts of the field become too numerous for you. But the Lord your God will deliver them over to you, and will inflict defeat upon them until they are destroyed. And he will deliver their kings into your hand, and you will destroy their name from under heaven. No one shall be able to stand against you until you have destroyed them. You shall burn the carved images of their gods with fire. You shall not covet the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it for yourselves, lest you be snared by it, for it is an abomination to the Lord your God. Nor shall you bring an abomination into your house, lest you be doomed to destruction like it. You shall utterly detest it and utterly abhor it, for it is an accursed thing. Praise God. Thanks for the well read. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a powerful narrative. I mean, we could probably just read the Parsha this week and let it talk to us. It's that powerful. And of course, when we're seeing in the word of God, we're seeing that you'll bless your livestock, you'll bless your grain. Um, we're seeing don't bring a curse things into your home. These 100% can all relate to us. You know, these things are applicable to us today. Um, this is a prophecy being foretold for the coming generations, okay? And we see in the word of God that this is going to happen to those who inherit the promised land. But this, this, this people, this nation, it doesn't just stop when the promised land um, when they get scattered and dispersed, this, this prophecy keeps going, okay? So definitely, we, this still applies to us today. Our hand can be blessed, of course it can. If we're keeping his ways, if we're keeping his commandments, he's a good and loving father. He's not going to give us a stone, is he, when we ask him for fish. You know, he's going to give us, um, he's going to bless us. I, I truly believe it. And it's not the prosperity gospel that I'm preaching. But it's there in the word, isn't it? If we obey his commandments, he will bless us. And that can be applied on a on a surface level whether that's physically and um, with finances and it can also apply on a spiritual level too and um, we're going to look at the spiritual blessings in part two but we're going to move on now we're going to keep going with this because the narrative's just beautiful and i've just picked out a verse there deuteronomy 7 7 13 deuteronomy 7 13 and he will love you and bless you and multiply you he will also bless the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your land your grain and your new wine your oil the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flock 
in the land of which he swore to the, your fathers to give to you. Okay, we're gonna see that a lot this week, the land which was sworn to the fathers. Okay, so we'll read on now because this is just, we can keep going on this. It's, um, it, it speaks for itself. Um, so we could go to um, verse 20, please. I think that's the end in Deuteronomy chapter eight. Every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers. And you should remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger and fed you with manna, which you didn't know, nor your fathers know that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Amen. Your garments didn't wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these forty years. You should know in your heart that as a man chastens his son, so the Lord your God chastens you. Therefore you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs, that flow out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. When you've eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgments and his statutes, which I command you today, lest when you have eaten and are full and have built beautiful houses and dwell in them, and when your herds and your flocks multiply and your silver and your gold are multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, when your heart is lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who led you through that great and terrible wilderness, in which were fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty land where there was no water, who brought water for you out of the flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with, ma meat with manna, which your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and that he might test you to do you good in the end. Then you say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand have gained me this wealth. And you should remember the Lord your God for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers, as it is this day. Then it shall be, if you by any means forget the Lord your God, and follow other gods, and serve them and worship them, I testify against you this day, that you shall surely perish. As the nations which the Lord destroys before you, so you shall perish, because you would not be obedient to the voice of the Lord your God. Sure. Praise sure. It's just so applicable. Um, you know, again, just relating to the Israelites in the wilderness. This is us, you know, against serpents and scorpions, against the rulers of darkness. And I can testify, you know, when I say these things, that we keep his commandments, um, that we'll be blessed. I can testify. You know, we have a scripture here, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 4. And your garments did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell for these 40 years. I mean, these can't be like... Prime Arnie shoes or anything because I don't know about you, but my shoes start to get a bit cabbaged after a, after a couple of months. So, so yeah, you know, it's a miracle, isn't it? This is actually a miracle in itself that, that even the garments, they didn't wear out. And just wanted to point this out because I, I like to share this every year that in the presence of God, um, there's actually only life, you know, he's, he's so life-given. Um, and I believe there's a, there's a parallel here with the book of Daniel we see. Um, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego um, trial don't we for, for not worshipping the ways of the nations and they're thrown into the furnace and a fourth man appears which I believe is, is, is Yeshua and um, king, um, the king calls them out he calls them out and says come out of the furnace and in Daniel chapter 3 verse 27 um, they noticed that the garments wasn't affected okay? even, even though they was in this fire the garments wasn't affect, affected and when I was reading this I was thinking wow this is the exact same way as in the wilderness the garments wasn't affected is this because they're in the presence of God here is this because the Holy Spirit's um, 
that no decay can last. We know that the, the strict hygiene laws, you know, you couldn't bring death towards the tabernacle. Why is this? Well, it's because I believe God's presence was there. And as they stood in that fire, you know, you, you could imagine, you know, some super films you see where, I don't know, maybe Superman is in a burning building and he comes out and, he, you know, he's got no clothes on or, or whatever. He's, he's, he's unscathed, but, but, but his clothes are gone. But here, even his, even his clothes are, 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 um, remain, you know, so it's... It, there's an aura here, there's an aura that's taking place. And I, I just wanted to point that out, that um, when, we, when, when we're invoking the Spirit of God, when we're calling upon the, the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh, Father, please um, move in your spirit. We're, we're getting a glimpse of that kingdom, um, what, what just breathes life, okay? When we're praying for people, it's just breathing life into people. And, that, and that's what we see um, going on here. In the presence of God, there is only life unless, um, you know, he permits it otherwise. Anything that is attached to death cannot be present unless permitted. Okay, I'm moving on. In this chapter 8, we see a, a system of remembrance now. And did anyone notice through the chapter how many times that Yah keeps saying, remember, remember this, remember that? I mean, it's quite a lot, really. We've only done two chapters in this Torah portion. He said three times already. And this to remember is actually mentioned about roughly 240 times in the Bible. It's, it's a lot of times he tells us to remember. You would think we would, we would have something wrong and we keep forgetting, right? <laughs> but, but we do, we really do, we keep forgetting. And this is what this whole chapter is about. He's like, look, when you become rich, when, you know, when, when you're flying around in your new car, remember who to give thanks to, okay? Because these things are, are a blessing for being obedient. And like, just as we just read from Job here, Job read this le uh, learned this lesson too. He can give and he can take away. He's the author of, of creation. And we have this system of remembrance, and this is what the Sabbath is. This is what we're doing every week, okay? It's a, it's a, it's a cyclical um, system of remembrance. That's the Moedim, the Jubilee. The Sabbath, this is why we do it every week. Some, some weeks, not for me, but some people may find it repetitive, but it's not because there's treasures every week what we can learn and, it, and, it, and it's putting to death our carnal man. Every time we're here, we're obso observing um, the, the, the presence of God, we're feeling the presence of God. And, 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 it, and when we're here, we don't, we don't feel an ounce of death, do we? You know, we might have some, something wrong with us, some type of infirmity, but when we gather as the brethren, we're unstoppable, aren't we? We feel unstoppable. All them things and cares of the world, all the finances and debts and, and whatever we've got going on. It's like we're in that fire. It's like we're, 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 it's like we're Shed Shedrach and Meshach and Abednego in the fire. Like, come on, let's go. <laughs> um, yeah, so the assistance of remembrance is huge and this is why we do it and this is the importance of the, of the team, okay? It's a strategy used against the accuser, okay? The fowler, and it's a strategy that's used against the flesh. And I recommend this to anyone, okay? So if you want it, if you want a strategy to crucify the flesh, okay, we're going to look at how you should use this now. Um, because it's all over the Torah and it invites a level of gratitude. It can rally us up against the wicked one and it, it destroys any anxieties, any doubts of the flesh. And, 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 and King David and other, other people in the Bible used to recall the, the, the incredible battles that, that the Father has, has won for them in prayer and in song. Mm -hmm. And it's quite biblical that we, that we do this and we, we need to start doing it to each other more often. I need to start saying, Joe, remember when, he when, when our Father delivered you on this? Sean, do you remember this? I'm, I'm, I'm really recounting, using these testimonies. Mm -hmm. As we know in Revelation, it's the testimony, isn't it? That, that, what, what, what's there? It's, it's huge, the testimony. Mm -hmm. So we're going to move... Well, just before we move to the gospel account, we're just going to have a quick look now at all these times where it says remember, okay? Um, so in this partial we see, if you should say in your heart, these nations are greater than I, how can I dispossess them? You shall not be afraid of them, but you shall remember what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and to all Egypt. A little bit further on, and you shall remember the Lord your God led you all these ways, 40 years in a wilderness, to humble you and test you to know what was in your heart, whether you will keep his commandments or not. Huge. A couple of verses later, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for He, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers, as it is this day, then it shall be, if you by any means forget 
the Lord your God and follow other gods and serve them and worship them, I will testify against you this day that you will surely perish. And then just other, other I mean, there's 240 of them odd, but there's just a couple more. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Okay, we know this one. Um, but you, but you shall remember that you were sla a slave in Egypt, and the Lord your God redeemed you. Okay, so we're seeing it here. Remember, remember, not the fifth of November. Remember, remember the way of the God. Remember His ways. Isaiah forty six verse nine. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is no one like me, or none like me. Jeremiah, thus says the Lord, stand in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths where the good way is, and walk in it. Then you will find rest for your souls, okay? You want to know what rest is for your souls? There's the formula, okay? Seek the old ways, seek the ancient paths, paths recall the testimonies, keep the Sabbath, remember what Yah has done to us, remember that we was once slaves to sin, to Babylon, to Egypt, just how Israel was slave to Pharaoh and these verses what we're reading here now in, in Deuteronomy chapter 8 they're actually so prophetic and they come up massively in, in, in the gospel account we read don't we that Yeshua Jesus fasted 40 days in the wilderness okay and people say this is a day for every year um, that the Israelites was in the wilderness and we have this scripture that comes up here but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord okay so keep that in mind now, we've got the 40 years in this chapter we've got, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. And we're going to go now to Matthew chapter 4, and we're going to see how Yeshua HaMashiach, God in the flesh, deals with the accuser, deals with the flesh. I mean, he's fasted, he's had no food and water. I mean, this is how you do it, okay? This is how you, this is how you combat any trials you're going on. And in Matthew chapter 4, and we've got to remember now, in, in, this, in this instance of, of the narrative, he's been baptised, okay? He, and he's been sent into the wilderness, okay? He's been, just like the Israelites, they went through the Red Sea and then were sent into the, into the wilderness. So, as we just read, it's the time of trial, it's the time of tempting, of testing. Let's see how our Yeshua handles the test. Then Yeshua was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights afterwards he was hungry now when the tempter came to him he said if you are the son of God command that these stones become bread but he answered and said it is written man shall not live by bread alone but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God then the devil took him up to the holy into the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him if you are a son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest, your, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Yeshua said to him, it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again, the third time now, the devil took him up on, a, on an exceedingly high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, said to him, All these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Then Yeshua said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. We've just read this. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Okay. So if you want to know how to defeat the flesh. If you want to know how to defeat the accuser coming against you to, to, to resist the devil and he'll flee, it's Deuteronomy, it's the words, it's the commandments, okay? That's the one book that Yeshua quoted from. And we actually see in this, in this, um, in this account, we see how crafty the serpent is, okay? He knows scripture, so you've got to be armed up, okay? Mm -hmm. And did anyone notice when he says here, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. Did anyone notice something that, that, that the accuser missed out? Just before Yeshua went into the wilderness, what did God call Yeshua when, after he was baptised? It's, it's very small, yeah, it's very small. What, what, what did God say? 
my beloved son. Hang on, Satan, you've missed that out there. I'm not just the son of God, I'm the beloved yeah. son of God. Okay, let's get that straight. Mm -hmm. let's, you know, let's, let's clarify here yeah, because the truth can be twisted. He's not just any son of God, he's the beloved son of God. And we see this in the garden as well. Did, really, did God really say this? You know, we've got to be careful, we've got to, we've got to test the truth, we've got to see if it stands, okay? We can't always take scripture at first glance, we've got to all be Bereans, go away, study the word, pray to our Father, seek the scriptures, and I believe he will reveal it to us. So we have to remember what Yad has promised, okay? That's the book of Deuteronomy, it's all about remembering what's taken place. It's all about recalling the accounts of leaving, leaving Egypt. And I think we should do this more often. I mean, in the prayer group, we can do it. We can get the spirit going and give Yad all the glory. You know, let's remember how we was delivered, please. Let's, let's please, let's never forget. <laughs> let's never forget. So with that, we'll come to a close with part one. And in part two, we're gonna look at the promise of Abraham and the gift and the true definition of grace. Okay, so we'll end there. Brothers and sisters, Thank shalom. You. Thank you. Shalom. So, as we was looking at in part one, we was looking at Kev, the title of the Torah portion. And we know this can mean consequence, because, if. Um, it's an action of doing something, and we're going to unpack this a little bit further now. And I just want to open up to the room. Has anyone heard of the butterfly effect before, before in this room? Yeah, the butterfly effect. No, I'll explain it. So this is it, and it's, I'll, I'll explain it. How, how, how I googled it first, and then I'll, I'll put it in layman's terms. A property of chaotic systems by which small changes in initial conditions can lead to large scale and unpredictable variation in the future state of the system, okay? And in layman's terms, the reason why it's called a butterfly effect is that um, you have a butterfly and his, his, his little, little wings can cause a draft and it can snowball and it can build up and it can build up to another country where it's a it's a tornado okay it, it's it's basically the butterfly effect is something so small um can can affect and, and build up to something so great okay and we're gonna quickly read a section from this week's haftarah okay we don't really do this option uh, often we don't really read from the prophets and um, but it ties in beautifully um so the butterfly effect we're going to keep that in mind <clears throat> as we're reading this now so we're going to go and um, for from isaiah 51 and I'll give, I'll give Tommy a break, I'll read this one, and then you can, um, you can read out uh, the other chapters from the Parsha. So, biblically relating, the butterfly effect, one man's actions caused a large-scale, unpredictable outcome to the ruler of darkness that would change the future state of the system for eternity, okay? So that is the butterfly effect, something so small and unpredictable can change the future, okay? So Isaiah 51 verse 1, let's, let's get a bit of background. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness, you who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were cut and to the quarry from which you were hewn. Look to Ab Abraham your father and to Sarah who gave you birth. When I called him, he was but one. Then I blessed him and multiplied him. For the Lord will comfort Zion and will look with compassion on all her ruins. He will make her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and a melodious song. Pay attention to me, my people, and listen to me, my nation, for a law will go out from me and my justice will become a light to the nations. I will bring it about quickly. My righteousness draws near. My salvation, my Yeshua is on the way and my arms will bring justice to the nations. The islands will look for me and wait in hope for my arm. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look at the earth below, for the heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment and its people will die like gnats. 
but my, my Yeshua, my salvation will last forever and my righteousness will never fail. Listen to me, you who know what is right. You people with my law in your hearts, do not fear the scorn of men. Do not be broken by their insults, for the moth will devour them like a garment and the worm will eat them like wool. But my righteousness will last forever. My salvation, my Yeshua, through all generations. Amen. Amen. This is, this is, this is so prophetic. It's end times. It's Abrahamic. And it's speaking about the coming Yeshua. And just as I said with the butterfly effect, it's how one man's action caused a large scale unpredictable outcome to the rulers of darkness that would change the future state of the system for eternity. So it's unpredictable, you know, Tommy mentioned last week, um, he brought up a scripture saying, if the, if the rulers of this age would have known, they would never have crucified Christ, okay? So it was, it was unpredictable, it was almost like a glitch in the matrix when, matrix when Yeshua came. <clears throat> so we're going to read on now on the Torah portion. Just wanted to set the stage with that beautiful prophecy, okay, given in Isaiah. So we're going to skip to the last chap, last um, second to last chapter of the book, and it's or of, of the Parsha, and it's chapter ten, please. And we're going to go from verse twelve to the end. And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you, but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all His ways, and to love Him? to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command you today for your good. Indeed, heaven and the highest heavens belong to the Lord your God, also the earth with all that is in it. The Lord delighted only in your fathers to love them, and he chose their descendants after them, you above all peoples, as it is this day. Therefore, circumcise the foreskin of your heart and be stiff-necked no longer. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality nor takes a bribe. He administers justice for the fatherless and the widow and loves the stranger, giving him food and clothing. Therefore, love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God, you shall save him, and to him you shall hold fast, and take oaths in his name. He is your praise, and he is your God, who has done for you these great and awesome things which your eyes have seen. Your fathers went down to Egypt with seventy persons, and now the Lord your God has made you as the stars of heaven in multitude. Beautiful. So as you notice on the screen here, we're seeing the Lord delighted only in your fathers, Lord your God has made you as the stars of the heaven in multitude. So we're getting something Abrahamic going on here, okay? We're going to keep reading in a sec. Um, but I just, I just love there again, it's this reiteration, isn't it? It's this remembrance once more and um, what we're seeing here. And in some translations it says, And the Lord loves the sojourner, not the stranger, the sojourner. And when I was reading this this week, I was thinking of the sisters coming over, you know, and, and the Lord does bless people um, who, who travel, you know, look, look, at, look at those who traveled up to this fellowship, look how, how many people have come to be a part of this fellowship from all around the UK. And I don't know about you, but you should all incredibly blessed. I mean, you have all been provided with jobs, a home, it's the, the sojourn is blessed, you know, those who are, those who are, um, are, are travelers, those who, who, who don't get stagnant in their ways, you know, and travel about, there's a, there's a, there's a blessing in that. Look, the Lord, the Lord shows favour in that. You know, I, I live in St. Helens. I don't know if it's quite the sojourn. Um, I might just get in, get away with that one. But yeah, so just the, the sojourn, the sojourn is, a, is, is, is a blessed people. And obviously there's loads of different biblical context in this. Um, but but for, for us... Um, we, we, every one of us can be a sojourner. We're all sojourners of this earth, aren't we? This is this is our temporary dwelling place, and we're going to go and dwell in the um, kingdom with our Father. So, so as 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 Tommy's reading them now, try and see yourself in this narrative. Try and see where where the Lord has tested you, where the Lord has blessed you, where we're going. Remember these. Israelites, they was going to the promised land, but where are we going to? We're going to the new Jerusalem, okay? We're, we're receiving that inheritance, um, a new land. So the parallels are all there. 
when you're ready, bro. <clears throat> Therefore, you shall love the Lord your God and keep his charge, his statutes, his judgments, and his commandments always. Know today that I do not speak with your children who have not known and who have not seen the chastening of the Lord your God, his greatness and his mighty hand and his outstretched arm, his signs and his acts, acts which he did in the midst of Egypt to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and to all his land, what he did to the army of Egypt, to their horses and their chariots, how he made the waters of the Red Sea overflow them as they pursued you, and how the Lord has destroyed them to this day, what he did for you in the wilderness until you came to this place, what he did to Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, the son of Reuben, how the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up, their households, their tents, and all the substance that was in their possession, in the midst of all Israel. But your eyes have seen every great act of the Lord which he did. Therefore you shall keep every commandment which I command you today, that you may be strong, and go in and possess the land which you cross over to possess, and that you may prolong your days in the land which the Lord swore to give your fathers, to them and their descendants, a land flowing with milk and honey. For the land which you go to possess is not like the land of Egypt from which you have come, where you sowed your seed and watered it by foot as a vegetable garden. But the land which you cross over to possess is a land of hills and valleys, which drinks water from the rain of heaven, a land for which the Lord your God cares. The eyes of the Lord your God are always on it, from the beginning of the year to the very end of the year. And it shall be that if you earnestly obey my commandments, which I command you today, to love the Lord your God and save him with all your heart and with all your soul. Then I will give you the rain for your land in its season, the early rain and the latter rain, that you may gather in your grain, your new wine and your oil. And I will send grass in your fields for your livestock, that you may eat and be filled. Take heed to yourselves, lest your heart be deceived, and you turn aside and save other gods and worship them, lest the Lord's anger be aroused against you, and he shut up the heavens so that there be no rain, and the, and the land yield no produce, and you perish quickly from the good land which the Lord is giving you. Therefore you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul, and bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall teach them to your children, speaking of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall write them on a doorpost of your house and on your gates, that your days and the days of your children may be multiplied in the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give them, like the days of the heavens above the earth. For if you carefully keep all these commandments which I command you to do, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to hold fast to him, then the Lord will drive out all these nations from before you, and you will dispossess greater and mightier nations than yourselves. Every place on which the sole of your foot treads shall be yours, from the wilderness and Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even to the western sea, shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand against you. The Lord your God will put the dread of you and the fear of you upon all the land where you tread, just as he has said to you. So we've just read the final chapter of, of this week's Torah portion. That's it, it's come to an end. But we still got need to investigate all what's going on here. And I don't know, in your own studies through the week, if you've, not, if you've been reading up on different things, and it's, it's, it's quite jam-packed, this Parsha. Um, we see in verse 18, Therefore you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul, and bind them as a sign in your hand, and they shall be as a frontlet between your eyes. And we know that our Jewish brothers and sisters actually take this quite literally, don't they? They, they, they bind the commandments. And later on here in the Parsha, it says, you shall think of the commandments as you're coming and going, and, and you'll, you'll leave a little mezuzah, mezuzah, mezuzah on, the that's it, on the doorpost. And, you know, hats off to them. They're really trying to, trying to walk this out, you know, literally. Um, and, I, and no doubt probably spiritually in ways as well. But for me, it's, it's, it's quite evident that, that this, is, this is spiritual here. And I would... I would uh, I, I wouldn't be in favour of binding um, physically. I think 
what this is actually pointing to is, is we, we see the mark of the beast take place, where is it? It's the right hand and it's the, it's the head, isn't it? Yeah. The sign, the mark of the beast. So I, I think this is a spiritual mark that we're seeing taking place here, which we'll see in Revelation as well, where people will be marked with the seal of Yahovah on people's foreheads. Mm. So there's, you know, just some, some food for thought because we have, there's a lot of traditions and, and coming on this messianic movement or observant movement which we follow, we can pick up a little bit of the Jewish traditions and not all are bad, but if they start um, overtaking the commandments, if they start superseding the commandments, then that's where we need to um, just investigate here. But I'm sure I'm sure our Jewish brothers and sisters do this out of love of our, of our father. Um, <clears throat> so as, we're, as we've been reading through, you may have noticed the Lord swore to your fathers um, the Lord swore to your fathers, and then again we see the Lord delighted only in your fathers. Um, so who's who's the father we're, we're talking of here? Um, biblically, who is it? Who are the fathers? It's no other than Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, isn't it? Abraham, the father of the faith, the father of many nations. And we are all blessed because of Abraham. Okay, it was because of Abraham that we are all actually sitting in this room here today. Um, it's it's because of that promise given to Abraham that we that we're, we're allowed to be credited sitting here today. Okay, what do I mean by that? Let's 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 delve in a little deeper. So in Genesis, we've got to go back here now. We've got to go back to the to the first book in the Bible, Genesis. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, "This is speaking of Isaac. This do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land of which I shall tell you. Dwell in this land, and I will be with you and bless you." For for to you and your descendants, I will give you all these lands and I'll perform the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father. And I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give you the descendants of all these lands in your seed. All the nations of the earth shall be blessed because I have Abraham obeyed my voice and kept charge my commandments, my statutes and my laws. OK, the Torah title of, of, of this Parsha, Ekev, this is, it's a result of, it's, it's a because, it's if you do this, okay, it's action, it's a doing with, building upon what Joe brought him last week with the wedding, wedding commandments, and it's because Abraham kept the commandments of God, we are blessed, that's, that, that's what it is, okay, this is, this is the grassroots of our faith now, and this is actually the gospel message, what we're seeing here, and we're going to see how this is confirmed in scripture, and if I was to ask the room the definition of grace, we, we, we might get a few different answers, probably all along the same lines. Um, you know, probably very nice sound and biblical sound and maybe it might go along the signs of, uh, sounds of unmerited gift of the divine favour in the salvation of sinners, maybe something like that. Um, and I'm all down for it. It makes sense biblically. It's great, it works. But what's actually the debt? Biblical definition of grace. Okay, I, I, I want to know this now. I want to see this in the scriptures because we know grace is a massive, massive word in the Christ, Christianity as a whole, isn't it? It's huge. It's a massive word. We, 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 we deserve to know what this word grace means. Okay, grace is actually what we've just read. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, my... Uh, my laws, in your seed, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Not because of what we did or you did. It's because of one man that obeyed the commandments and by his faith, by the promise of God, we are allowed to enter into righteousness. You see, grace actually wasn't invented in the Gospels. It was invented here um, or, or it, was, it was first shown in, in, its, in, in its fullness here. And where do we see this in the Parsha? Well, we've, in, in, in chapter 9, which we didn't read, we see it come to life, okay? So Moses is, is saying here, and he's preaching to the, to the nation, he says, It is not because of your righteousness or the uprightness of your heart that you go in to possess their land, the promised land, but because of the wickedness of the nations that the Lord your God drives them out before you and, and that he may fulfill the word which the Lord swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, so grace here was, was, was released and demonstrated to the children of Israel in the wilderness. Not, it, it's here it's in scripture. It's not because of your righteousness that you're going to see the promised land. It's because of what your forefathers done. And our God 
when he when he gives a promise, okay, he doesn't change on emotion. He doesn't change on on you know if if, if it's gloomy outside, if there's things going wrong in his life. When he gives a promise, it's eternal, and it doesn't matter what happened after this. He still had to fulfil that promise taking place. So that is grace right there. Grace has been shown to the Israelites. None of them, okay. And I know sometimes when we're reading about the Israelites and walking through the wilderness and. And, and, you know, I was speaking to Andy, me and, me and brother Andy went, went for a walk. And you can think, oh, you know, did, did I deserve to get into the promised land, you know? And should I have been left in the wilderness? And do I deserve to go into this next, um, you, you know, this next life and to be in the millennial kingdom and in the, the eternal reign? Well, not because of your righteousness, okay? This is it. No, none of them would have made it into the promised land. It was because what was sworn to the fathers. Okay, so, we, so when we're reading about the testing and the trials, we can be quite harsh on ourselves, but we have to remember that this is what grace is. It's not because what the children of Israel have done in the wilderness. It's because of what God has done by making covenants with our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who is Israel. Okay, let's see this in the scriptures. Galatians chapter 3, verse 6 to 9. Just as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted for him, to him for righteousness. Therefore know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand saying, in you all the nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. So we see there the gospel is preached to Abraham and reading on in Galatians, we read, now the words it was credited to him were written not only for Abraham, but also for us to whom righteousness will be credited. For us who believe in him, who raised Yeshua HaMashiach from the dead, he was delivered over to death for our trespasses and was raised to life for our justification, okay? So just as Abraham believed and was credited righteousness when we believe in Yeshua HaMashiach, that is, 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 is how we can cross over into the promised land, just like the children of Israel. Back in Genesis, the account of where um, our, our father uh, um, gives out the blessing. Then Abraham, or Abraham at that time, then Abraham fell on his face and God talked to him saying, as for me, Behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be a father of many nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but you shall be called Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you exceedingly fr fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. Hint, hint. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in their generations for an everlasting covenant, everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendants after you. Also I give to you and your descendants after you the land in which you are a stranger, all the land of Canaan as an everlasting possession and I will be their God. So fast forward and now and we see Abraham's name changed to Abraham and becoming the father of many nations and being granted the promised land as an everlasting possession, okay? It just doesn't stop when this world goes in flames, we know. It's an everlasting possession. There's a new Jerusalem that's coming, okay? And this is how um, this is how we can step into this inheritance. Ephesians chapter two, verse eight. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and not that and and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Yeah. Romans four sixteen. Therefore it is of faith that it may be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Okay, so even if we are not from that lineage, he is the father of the faith. He's the father of us all. So reading on now in the gospel accounts, Luke chapter 3, verse 8. Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. And do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. Oh, hang on. I thought we can say Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones, okay? But the people who he was addressing here was people who were saying, no, 
got the I've got the lineage in me. I've got the blood in me. I'm I'm actually a, a physical descendant. And what Yeshua is saying here is like, no, I can raise up children to Abraham from these very stones. Okay, and this is how we become grafted in. It doesn't matter if you've got blonde hair and blue eyes. Okay, I can be grafted in to the promise. Romans four sixteen. That is why it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his offspring, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to the one who shares the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Amen. Amen. And this is what grace is, okay? It's the, it's the promise. It's, a, it's, it's the promise which we didn't even, you know, we wasn't even present at that time when Abraham was obedient to the commandments. And, and through him, Anyone on this earth, any nation of the earth who, who, who trusts in Yeshua HaMashiach can become part of the commonwealth of Israel. Through one man, we can be credited righteousness. And through Abraham, seed, came the king of kings, Yeshua, who we are able to be grafted in to the commonwealth of Israel. Again, it's not because of your righteousness or the upright, uprightness of your heart that you go around and possess their land, okay? I've got to stress this. I've really got to stress this, especially in a community as well, because as we, as we develop and as more people come along to this community, we really don't want to breathe a, a ground where, where, where we become pious and self-righteous, because what ends up happening is, is people don't want to talk about um, the, the problems they've got going on in their lives because they think the next person's holier than thou. We want to be able to be honest with each other that, like, look, I wouldn't be able, you know, I'm, it's not because of my righteousness, it's not because of my uprightness in my heart, okay? It's not because of Joe's, he's just a man. I mean, I think when, 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 when people hang around with us, they, they realize how human we actually are, you know? We, we make mistakes, we are just men. You know, we're, we're trying to seek his ways, we're trying to seek the ancient paths. We're trying to seek righteousness, seek the Father, but it's not because of our righteousness. No, no, God, God forbid. Um, it's because it's because of the promise that took place, and um, it's, it's the grace what we've all been shown. Okay, um, so we need. I think as a community, <clears throat> you know, we all need to be able to share our, our, our problems to each other. And some people it's easier than others. You know, I, I will admit. For me, I've known Joe, I've known Sean for years. They're usually my two go-to people um, to, to, to go to. Um, but I, know, I probably know that if I wanted a complete unbiased decision, I probably want to go to an Angie, you know, or I want to go to a Tommy, someone who, who may not um, show partiality um, on, these, on these matters. So Ephesians, we'll read, we'll read a little few more verses attached to this. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves, it is a gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast, for we are God's workmanship created in Yeshua HaMashiach to do good works, which God prepared in advance as our way of life. I'm not, I'm not um, preaching here that we shouldn't obey the commandments. We know that faith without works is dead, as Yeshua brothers, uh, Yeshua's brother preached himself. But this, I'm just trying to nail home here that it's all because of the promised seed of Abraham, of how we have this opportunity. And there's no price, okay? Salvation is a, is a free gift. It is a free gift, and it's up to us to receive that um, and obey his commandments. It's not because of your righteousness that you will inherit or the uprightness of your heart that you will go in to possess their land, the promised land, okay? And we need to give room for people to make mistakes. We do. We are all human. And as this community grows, we're going to be standing on each other's feet a little bit more, each other's tails, a little bit more because we're all living in close proximity we're all sharing life together and we need to give that that, that bit of grace to like look okay father you give me grace you know let me reflect your character and show that on our brothers and sisters that yet yeah, we do make mistakes we do need time to grow we actually need sometimes time to 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 understand what may be presented to us um time time to correct ourselves and sometimes this can take six months eight months we need to be realistic with each other and show that mercy, show that, 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 in, that um, love and kindness and give room for people to find the way. Now, of course, I'm not giving a license to sit here, but that means, um, you know, I think, I think in, in one life, if they're struggling on the walk, you give them time. The only time I believe that we may, as, as a fellowship, have to revisit 
um, some, something going on is if it's in the ministry and then it's a duty to them because it's no longer about an individual, it's about the body being affected. But we do need to give people time to make, to make, you know, to, <laughs> to give them a breather, okay? I know uh, we read the Torah each week and, and we study his word and we, 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 we I have no doubt here that everyone in this room um, is, is try, trying to obey the commandments and trying to, to walk out his ways the way, the way he tells us to. So we need to honour that and see that in everyone and understand that we're all at different journeys in our walk, okay? I was, I was trying to summarise what the Bible what the Bible, what the genre of the Bible was, okay? I was trying to summarise what it was. And if I could in one word, I mean, it's hard. It probably has a couple of genres it falls under. But for me, it's a historical romance, okay? And we know through Abraham, Yeshua, God in the flesh, was born and died to save us from death, allowing us to inherit the eternal promised land, the new Jerusalem, what we read about in Revelation. And we've got to be on guard with this, brethren, okay, and sister, and we've got to be on guard with this because we know the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly, okay? And we see, I've seen this so much in this faith, you know, we need to be so careful that this gift that we've been given to, that this promise we've been given, that we don't step outside of this blessing, that, that what is being given to us, that we don't begin to... to, to to take it for granted, we need to be on guard with this. And people can experience a form of godliness in the world. You know, at the moment, um, online is a, there's a bit of a trend with, with DMT and drugs and seeing altered states of consciousness and, 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 and seeing this, uh, another dimension and potentially other gods with a small g. And multiple people are saying, oh, I'm seeing the same person as this person who's took this drug and uh, the world's apart. And, there's always a consequence, okay? There's always a consequence when, when, when we're trying to seek God outside of the word of God, okay? There's, a, there's always a cheap counterfeit. It's, it's too easy, you know, with yoga, meditation, or with DMTs, drugs, hallucin hallucinogenics. It's too easy. It really is. Uh, if we want to experience God, it has to be through his word. And of course, it's this. It, it will take. It probably will be longer than taking a DMT trip and uh, or, or doing this or try, trying to trying to practice some yoga, but we'll get God in His true form. We won't get the deception that comes along with it. We won't get the God coming to us with a small G, okay. And I wanted to point that out here really because I've, I'm seeing this trend at the moment with DMT and hallucinogenics. And I, if you want to experience God. Start obeying the commandments, start reading the Torah, start interacting with the word of God and you will see him in your life. We have just read about how, how the garments didn't wear out in the wilderness. This week, you know, I've, I've praise be to Yah, my, my car passed the 10 OT. I mean, I ragged it up and down the country. I lack faith. I thought that it wasn't gonna, gonna pass and it did. And some, some people could brush that off, but that to me is a miracle, okay? That to me is a miracle because at the time I needed it, God answered my prayers. And, 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 he, and, he, and he didn't let me garments wear in the wilderness. So we have to, we can see godliness in its true form when we interact with the word. And it's when we come in here week in, week out, reading the Torah portions, getting on his, on a, on his system of remembrance is when we start to see uh, the Holy Spirit move in our lives. Don't take the cheap counterfeit. It's too easy. It's, it is, it is, <laughs> it's too easy. And there's a, there's a beautiful pastor over in the States called Bill Cloud, and I got this quote from him, and it just resonated with me, especially with this Torah part, a portion. I heard this a while back, and it goes like this. I can't tell anyone what to do, but I can tell you, I can tell the consequences of what you are doing, okay? I can't tell anyone what to do, but I can tell the consequences of what you are doing. And this is in accordance with the book of life, with the book of words. And as we read the Torah portion of Kev, we see there's consequences for everything, okay? For every action, whether it's good or whether, or whether it's bad. And as a fellowship, we can never tell someone, do this in your life, do that in your life. We can only tell you what the word says. You know, we pray, we pray, to, the, we pray to Yah and we search the scriptures. 
and we try and give our utmost a, a biblical answer of, of the outcomes of this. And you can do this yourself as well. You can, you can certainly do this to yourself by reading the word of God and, and, and praying and in, intermediating with God. Revelation chapter 3 verse 10. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I will also keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast to what you have, that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of the heavens from my God, and I will write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So we've just spoke about the binding on your hands, the mark on the head. We're seeing it all here. We're seeing the new Jerusalem, the promised land. <clears throat> and we're even seeing those who are able to escape the hour of trial, which is coming on the whole world. I mean, this is addressed to the Church of Philadelphia. We want to be in that Church of Philadelphia. So when name. Um the bridegroom accepts the bride, she gets a new name. Yeah. Because if we all got a new name that no one mm. knows, you know. That's mm. when the bride's accepted. Oh, as, as the, the bride, you know. Abraham's name, it, it does mean exalted father, but speaking about homophones, it's spelled slightly different, but it's pronounced exactly the same. Abraham, Abraham. Mm. It's also the people who have crossed over. Wow. You know, Abara is to cross over or to pass through, and mm. Am is people. Mm. You know, it's um, and they're the ones who are blessed. Who God blesses yeah. the descendants from all from Abraham. You know, those who've crossed over, the people mm. who've crossed over or passed through. Yeah, Abraham. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, one who's crossed over. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. We see the crown here in Revelation, and I believe the crown is the righteousness it's it's your holiness it's the, it's, it's the set apartness okay it's your inheritance please brothers and sisters people listening online never forget that never forget the inheritance of where we're going and where we have been let's remember let's 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 make an effort of this system of remembrance what he set up for us remember that we were once land, slaves in the, in the land of egypt remember the sabbath day okay but let's also not forget where we're going after all, we do serve a God who is, who was, and who is still to come. That is his character. So I'll just end in prayer. Father, I just want to pray for the men of the world. Father, I keep hearing a report worldwide that there isn't any men who are stepping up into the faith, Father, who aren't being spiritual leaders. Father, first off, I just give thanks for this fellowship. That there's men willing to serve, Father. That there's men. We have an abundance of, of, of men, of, of, of mature men in the world and of, as of your word who are willing to serve, Father. And you're training up the, the newer men of faith. And we just give you all the glory for that, Father. As, as I feel so blessed, Father, to have a brotherhood. But Father, speaking to people who are now in America, people who are now even around the rest of the UK or in Australia, Father, I just want to pray for the men this week. I just want to lift up the men and ask that you rise up spiritual leaders, Father. Rise them up so they can teach your people your ways. Father, pour out your Holy Spirit as the hour of trial is about to come upon us. I pray that in this room and all those who are watching online, I pray that we are worthy to escape the hour of trial, Father. Let us not forget of where where our ancestors have come from. Let us not forget where we are going and that you are preparing a place for us. Let us rejoice that we are seated in heavenly places. We love you, Father. We bless you, Father. We thank you that you do not lie that you hold fast to the covenant of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. We thank you that you sent your only begotten son to die for us. 
rise again on the third day, ascend and save us in the heavenly tabernacle. We thank you that you are interceding for us right now, Yeshua HaMashiach, in the heavenly tabernacle. I pray, Father, if it's one prayer that is answered today, Father, I pray that you rise up spiritual men in Australia, in the United States, to lead the women, Father, to teach your ways to, to all, Father, who want to hear. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.